Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here. And today I want to talk to you about moon phases. You know, a lot of guys out there say, well, you know, if you're going to fish every now and then, don't pay attention to moon phases. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you understand moon phases, you're also going to understand what mood the fish are in, uh, what type of fish have been feeding, which ones haven't been feeding, and a lot of the time where they're located in the mood, you know, uh, how many times you're going to have to present a bait to them, and you know how little times you're going to have to present a bait to them. So understanding mood phases is absolutely crucial at all times. I don't care if you're just a weekend angler or if you fish one day a month. You go out there to catch fish and your intention is to catch fish. So I'm going to teach you about moon phases and that should help you catch some fish. Now everybody knows what the full moon is, right? We see the full moon at night time. You know, it's lit up. We can walk around without a flashlight. So what does that mean to us? Well, the moon puts off light, clearly, right? On a full moon, we can see with a little bit more light. So what that means is a lot of those fish start coming up to the surface to feed on those bugs. You'll go out in a full moon, you'll see fish jump in and crack in the surface and eating, you know, flies or whatever flies down close to the top of the water. Well, what that is, is the fish and everything that has to see to feed, the minnows and everything, in the middle of the day, we have ultraviolet light um, put off by the sun. This is a radiation light that goes down deeper. Uh, we're not going to get into that, but that's what moves those fish further down um, to feed in the middle of the day versus at nighttime. They come up to see because they're only dealing with visual moonlight. There is no UVA light or UV light at that point. So let's remove that out of the equation. So nighttime, most of the feeding is taking place in the top. I would say on a perfectly full moon day and a clear body of water as low as maybe 20 feet. Um, on most bodies of water that are semi-stained, you're probably looking in the upper 5 to 10 foot water column and the surface. So keep that in mind. So at nighttime, we got a full moon. Okay. So now what's going on is we got minnows going up there to feed on mosquitoes. And everything that wants to feed has to get up in there in that shallow water column to feed. So the next morning rolls around and we go out there to fish after a full moon. Well, guess what? Everybody that was interested in having a meal is now full. You don't sit down at Thanksgiving dinner, stuff yourself with a bunch of turkey, and sit down on the couch and someone hands you a hamburger and you're like, oh yeah, and you tear into it. Well, guess what? You could throw a hamburger attached to the end of a fishing line in front of my face after I just gorge myself on some giant meal the night before because I can see I'm not going to want it. So realistically, what's going to happen is when you're fishing a full moon, you know, okay, there was full moon the night before, you know that next morning, more than likely those fish will not be feeding. Um, the reason for this is they had all night to feed. They can see everything moved up there. They fed, they gorged themselves, they're all stuffed. So realistically, the evening bite is going to be a much better bite because they know the full moon's going to be out the next day so they can go get all that food they want in the next evening. They're being acclimated to their environment. The moon is their condition and the moon is that predictability. So if we say we're going to go fishing on Saturday and we look at the moon chart, we say, okay, it's been almost a full moon the last two days. The moon's going to be starting to fade away, but realistically, you look at a lunar chart or you're bringing up a, a lunar calendar and it says, well, the moon's 95%. That's close enough to full to me. If the lottery was 95%, I would play 24 hours a day. Okay, so it's still pretty much a full moon. So realistically, you say, okay, we're going fishing Saturday. It's 95% moon. That means they've been eating all night more than likely. Yeah, you may go out there and get the occasional fish, but realistically we're fishing for the majority. So if you have the option to go that morning or the very next evening, what should you choose? Clearly the evening, right? Because predictability says they're going to be feeding at nighttime. So as soon as the sun starts to go down and that moon starts to come back up, guess what? The dinner bell's ringing. So now we have the opposite. We have the new moon. And everybody knows what the full moon is, but a lot of people are like, what's a new moon? The new moon is when it's almost pitch black outside, okay? And it's just starting to come around. It, we have very little visibility. You can look at a lunar calendar or a lunar app on your phone, and you'll see that it's 1%, 2% lunar. Well, that means you practically have no light at nighttime, okay? Also, that means the fish can't see. The sun's not out. There is no UV light going into the water. Everybody's blind at this point. So what comes into play is the fish's sensory capabilities and their scent. So if you're going to go out on a new moon 
in the middle of the night, and let's say you wanted to catch a fish in the middle of the night, but it was black out there. Do you think they can see it? No, they can't. Unless they have some sort of amazing ability for physically seeing an object, not feeling it, and not smelling it, that scientists have never heard about, no, they can't see it. Okay, so this is why a lot of guys will go out there on the new moon and fish at nighttime and they'll say, oh man, I caught a giant bass. What they're throwing is big old swim baits that put off a lot of water displacement. A lot of predator species can feel. Their sensory, their sensory ability is to feel that object. Or you got a crankbait, something that creates a lot of noise. Guess what? They can feel it. They can hear it. They don't see it. Okay, so let's say you're fishing for predator species. On the new moon, it's black out there. If you're not putting off a lot of water displacement to where they can feel it, creating a lot of noise to where they can hear it, add scent. Okay, fish can smell, they can feel, they can see. On the new moon, it's black out, they can no longer see, so they're gonna feel and they're gonna smell. So scent and noise on a new moon, if you're gonna fish at nighttime, are crucial to getting bit. A lot of the time, that bigger predator species, uh, let's say you're fishing for largemouth, you got a giant female sitting there, eight, 10 pound female. Okay, in the middle of the day, she doesn't wanna hunt. Everything can see her, she's lit up, okay? On a full moon, yeah, she can go feed at nighttime, but what's gonna happen is when she feels something going by her in the middle of the night, she knows it can't see her, she can't see it, but she can feel it. So right then, boom, opportunity, because if she were to hunt, she would have a very difficult time because she'd be going around blind. She would have to feel for everything and expend a lot of energy to try to find food. So realistically, a lot of these guys say, oh, I catch my giant bass on the new moon in the middle of the night. Well, what's going on is their big lure is passing a big female that's looking for a very easy opportunity, so they take it, and that's what's going on there. So here's the thing. A new moon is dark, and I said the full moon is bright. So the new moon, the very next morning you go out, guess what? The dinner bell wasn't ringing all night because a lot of those bigger predators didn't have the opportunity to feed because they did not want to expend energy and go searching out. So first light in the morning, guess who's going to want to eat? That's right, big mama, big brother, whoever you're fishing for, that big species, now is getting ready to feed. And I've seen this happen numerous times. Trust me, it's not just me who knows about this. It's a lot of top end anglers out there. And I've seen it happen all the time. I've been out, uh, we just did a Purple Heart Anglers event taking out the Wounded Veterans recently. And it was a new moon, okay, uh, two days before. So that means we had very low percentage of light at nighttime being put off by the moon. Therefore, those bigger predator species could not find anything or track it down, nor were they going to try to waste all that energy and thin themselves out going out hunting. So the very next morning, the very, fish we, the very first trout we hit was six and a half pounds. That's a giant by anybody's trout fishing standards, if you ask me for a rainbow trout. So what's going on is you have a new moon at nighttime, very dark. Okay, look at the lunar calendar, look at the percentage. I say if the percentage is, you know, uh, less than 10% light, then focus on that. Or more than 90% light, focus on that. So if it says, you know, if you saw the full moon, you got about a day or two after where it's still pretty bright or a day or two before where it's still pretty bright and vice versa. With the new moon, it's dark. You got a day or two before that, that it's very dark and a day or two after that that's very dark, you know? And after those dark nights, your bite's gonna be better first thing in the morning. After those bright nights, your bite's gonna be better later on in the evening. And that's just simple predictability. It's the same thing if you or I were out having to hunt for a meal and not run over to some drive-through to get it. Now, a lot of people ask me, hey Nick, what's, what about those times in between where we got like 50%? Well, what's gonna happen at that time is you're gonna have sporadic feeding. You're gonna have some feeding in the middle of the day, some feeding in the middle of the night. It's less predictable. So you're not gonna really be focusing on concentration at that point. So don't worry about those times, you know, where it's in the middle. Focus more like on, uh, you know, pay attention to when it's a full moon and pay attention to when it's a new moon and it'll allow you that predictability. Any time in between, I would say disregard the moon at that point. So now some people say, okay, well if I'm fishing for a species that's a scavenger, how does the moon affect me? Well here's some plain and simple facts. Let's take a catfish for example. You have some catfish which are predators and some catfish which are scavengers. Let's just take a bullhead catfish which is a scavenger. Often does not like to swim to the surface and grab food. 
Now let's say it's a full moon, okay? And we know all the fish are up feeding on the full moon. Well, this bullhead catfish is primarily a scavenger and does not want to come up off the bottom to feed. So realistically, he would have to find dead bait, okay? So that bullhead catfish, which is a scavenger who doesn't want to come up to feed, may have not been feeding that night. So if you have a scavenger species that doesn't have the capability of hunting down you know, things at nighttime on the surface, realistically, after the full moon, he might want to bite in the morning because everything that's full now swim down is just hanging out and now he's got the opportunity to eat them. So you got to pay close attention to these things. Predator species, more often than not, are extremely affected by the full moon. They'll get up there and eat in the full moon, okay? And a lot of people get one part confused. That's real crucial right here. If you have a clear body of water, I'm talking, you know, 25, 30 foot visibility that a lot of these Northern California lakes have that I'm fishing. A lot of people will say the full moon, you can't catch a big bass on the full moon in clear water. The reason for this, okay, is that big bass, if he gets into open water on a full moon and it's clear out, the things he's trying to eat or the things she's trying to eat can see her. She's going to run, okay? And that's in that, you know, top 15 to, you know, 15, 10, 5 surface water column area. So that bigger fish realistically still has to hide okay to eat on the full moon if the water's dirty on a full moon that big bass can move right in there and ambush its food um you know so that's that's one of those little things to think about the water's dirty yes it does allow the fish a little bit more camouflage to move in get closer to the prey and eat it um, if the water's clear the fish still has to hide behind something or get you know have a direct ambush point um, on the bait fish that it's targeting so that's a good little rule to follow right there is, you know, after a full moon, fish the next evening. Don't fish the morning. Uh, if you don't have an option, what you do need to realize, let's say you're going to go out the next morning after a full moon anyways and you're fishing for bass. Well, you know they fed the night before. So there are certain things like reaction baits, crank baits, jerk baits, uh, flipping and pitching where things are going to drop right in their face and they react to it and eat it whether they're hungry or not. I'm sure we've all caught a fish and it's had another piece of like crawdad or, or a shad hanging out of its mouth. Why is that? Do you think the fish was hungry? Realistically, no, they weren't hungry. The fish simply reacted to your bait. So if you're gonna go fish the next morning after a full moon, you have to realize multiple, multiple casts to your favorite spots with a variety of lures to get those same fish to react. A lot of guys will go through, say they're not there. They'll throw one bait. Well, guess what? You didn't react or you didn't make a precise enough cast. Um, you know, after the new moon where it was dark, you can get out there, you can miss your fish by 20 feet and the fish will run it down and eat it. And you're like, oh, today's a good day. I know what happened is that fish was hungry. It needed that opportunity to eat after a dark night. Um, you go out there the next day after a full moon. You miss your fish by five feet, you won't get bit. You miss your fish sometimes by a foot, you won't get bit. After a full moon, if you're gonna fish in the morning, you got to be very, very precise. And if you're fan casting, I'm talking fan cast every six inches. Cover it. Cover it. If you know you're in a spot where you've caught fish before and at the same time of year, you know they're there. Realistically, if you're not getting bit, that doesn't mean they moved. That means more than likely they've already fed or you got to come back at the right time throughout the day. So I think that right there is giving you a much better understanding. So you know, full moon. Fish aren't hungry the next morning. More than likely, they're going to be hungry the next evening. Um, so you can be a little bit sloppier with your cast, throw a different variety of lure. It doesn't have to be 100% the bait that they want that day because uh, more than likely, that's feeding time and you're going to get a higher percentage of strikes. Um, you know, you go fishing the next day after a full moon, first thing in the morning, you know more than likely they fed that night before, so you're going to have to be very particular about the bait you choose. Use a variety, throw reaction baits, try to get them to react and try to get them to strike. And you can't be looking for a higher percentage of bites. So just understanding that the full moon basically causes the majority, majority of feeding at nighttime and the new moon causes much more difficult time for those bigger fish to eat at nighttime, therefore the morning's better, is gonna make you a much more proficient angler and get you on a lot more fish consistently. So just try to focus on understanding, is this a predator species? Is this a scavenger species? And that right there is gonna help you out a lot. 
Uh, you know your predator species do not want to exert a lot of energy. So if you want to go out there on a new moon when it's black, use something that displaces a lot of water to where if you do pass them, they still will feed. That doesn't mean on a black night they're not going to feed, but what you have to do is you have to get that bait close enough to them to where they will eat it. You know, a lot of the big trophy hunters out there will fish the new moon. Okay, it's black out there. These guys got lights on their boat. That bass can't see. Trust me, they can't see it. There's no UV. You know, they have to throw a big bait and they got to use scent or they got to use noise to get that reaction. But realistically, that fish is not out looking for a free meal at that point. That fish is looking to wait for the next morning. But if they find that opportunity in the day where they're like, oh, I'm hungry, I'm so hungry at nighttime. Oh man, I just wish something, there it is, bam. That applies. So don't think in, on the new moon in the middle of the night you can't catch a fish. Uh, the percentage is gonna be much higher for you to catch that fish in the morning, but it's very possible to get a giant in the middle of the new moon. Uh, it's very possible to get a giant on the middle of a full moon, but you're still gonna have to get it much closer to the target and it still is a little bit more visual than it would be on the new moon. So remember all these key factors, and if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to message me, email me, call me on the helpline, whatever you wanna do, guys. Thanks for being foundation members. Thanks for being part of my pro staff. Whoever's watching this, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching.